that's so powerful. Well, uh, within a few years, we will have wall size screens in vivid uh, three-dimensional imagery. So uh, our mentality is then, uh, so, and with such huge bandwidth, you know, it keeps doubling every year. The bandwidth will be such that uh, the whole planet will be able to get everything. We will get, we, everybody gets everything. So we get all the world media and in vivid three dimensions uh, in your living room. You can travel the world. And so our mentality, as a result of that, with, with countries, governments, sending out their national programs uh, to the whole world, and of course that will put pressure then for a world language, and that decision has already been made, it's English. So um, the, uh, the, the kind of linguistic snowball effect of English becoming more and more the world language, that, that process will run to completion. As the proportion of people who study English as a second language, as, as that pretty well saturates, as virtually everyone does that, then uh, the ministers of telecommunications deciding which languages to send up to the internet satellites and the cables and so forth, uh, they will choose increasingly English, and so you get a saturation effect. And with uh, an internet far faster, hugely uh, more attractive, like, like vivid, you know, as real as real, three-dimensional imagery that's, that's coming, it's in a few years away, uh, that will cause people's mentalities to shift up from national, instead of their uh, media confines, their, their mental constructs being limited to a, a national level, they will move up to global. Right? So we, in a sense, we will all become, culturally speaking, globans, you know, citizens of globa. The, that's the label I give to the world state, uh, ending in the letter A. I mean, so many countries and continents end in the letter A, so like America, Canada, Australia, and then continents, Africa, and so on. So Globa, the, the name of the world state. So we'll, we will become Globans, and the ideology in favor of that, so if, 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 if we do have a Globa, a world state, fully democratic, no more wars, no more arms trade, get rid of ignorance, get rid of poverty, and so on. So it's a big dream, very positive. Okay. And this last one, and I'll finish off here, um, culture bashing. Now, at first sight, you may say, your instinctive reaction may be, oh, how rude. And of course it is rude, right? If, you, if you're talking to some other person from a different culture and you bash that, I don't mean, I don't mean mildly criticize. I'm talking about bashing, right? A hefty, uh, vigorous, even aggressive, verbally aggressive uh, critique of the other person's uh, cultural norms, uh, that's rude, agreed. Now in uh, migrant countries, countries that ha have a, a migration policy, they're importing uh, future citizens of their country, and I've, I've lived in two, of, two such countries, so uh, countries such as uh, America, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and so on. Uh, in those countries, the, the attitude of PC, political correctness, is very strong. And that makes sense within the context of such um, cultures. Because what are they trying to do? They're trying to welcome future citizens, you know, new Americans or new Canadians or new Australians or whatever, into their culture. So therefore, to be nice to them, they don't criticize those people's former culture. Right? Okay. And uh, that makes a certain amount of sense. So culture bashing is, in a sense, counterintuitive to uh, somebody who's taken PC, political correctness, in other words, don't, don't criticize the other person's culture or cultural norms. Uh, it seems counterintuitive, but if you're a globist and a multi, especially if you're a multi, if you're lived in, by definition, if you've lived in more than one culture, uh, inevitably you will compare and rank uh, the various uh, norms of the two or more cultures that you've lived in. You, you'll, you'll be thinking, oh, this particular custom of, the, of my second culture that I've lived in is quite distinctly superior uh, to, to the equivalent custom in the fir my first culture. So you, you will be ranking them. Okay? 
Now, in some cases, um, in my case, I've lived in seven, right? Don't, don't forget, I'm a seven-country multi, multi-cultured person. Uh, the differences can be so great that uh, with respect to uh, the, the most, you know, the top, the most superior custom, you, say you're partic talking about a partic particular custom, and you're comparing how people behave relative to that particular custom compared to the equivalent custom in other cultures. Now, if you've lived in quite a few cultures, that gap, that difference in quality between the top, the top, your, what you judge as a multi, what you judge as the top one to the bottom one, that gap may become so great that you become contemptuous, right? And instead of criticizing, you just bash. So uh, to a globist multi, what purpose does culture bashing serve? Well, um, if you're a multi, it becomes clear to you that millions, if not billions of people do themselves damage by adhering to, from the multi perspective, to stupid customs. Right? That, that, that's for me personally, that's clear as day because you know, I've lived in seven of them and I see all these differences. So if you're a multi, you will say, Actually, these people don't have to suffer the limitations of these inferior customs. If they could become conscious, have their consciousness raised to the existence of superior customs in other cultures. And that's, that's what culture bashing is all about. So having globist multis culture bash, the point is to shake up the monos out of their nationalist uh, what's the word? conformity, complacency, I guess. Okay. So by by criticizing heavily the various norms of a mono, uh, I haven't used that word before, but a mono is a person who has lived in one culture, and a mono is definitely less sophisticated than a multi. Uh, you can make an analogy. Uh, with the attitudes between a city slicker, somebody who lives in the city, far more sophisticated, than a country bumpkin, some unsophisticated person living in the country, like a, like a peasant. So um, city slickers, a century or so back, were looking down on country bumpkins. So by analogy now, that uh, increasingly we live in a world becoming more multi-fied, right? Uh, consider the fact According to BBC Travel Service, every year about half a billion, 500 million people travel, mostly by air, uh, internationally. So that's having a huge impact on their mentalities, right? They're losing their mono mentality. And every year about 100 million people are actually working, living in a culture outside their first culture. Right? So. So the world is definitely multifying. So uh, pretty soon there will be a kind of tipping point where more people will consider themselves multis than monos. And then increasingly you will have the, you'll see the phenomenon of the multis pointing the finger at the monos and saying, you are a one country bumpkin. Right? So the, uh, this, this, uh, using culture bashing then becomes an essential tool by the multis to scorn the monos, trying to, to push them into thinking about the possibility of superior customs. So, so in a sense you could call this attitude of culture bashing by the, the multis as a kind of almost parental tough love. Now it's painful to the national or nationalist ego of the monos to be culture bashed, but uh, it's for their own good from the point of view of the multis. Because if the monos can be made conscious that, that a particular custom that uh, they're following, that, 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 that they live by, is actually harmful to them, then if they can uh, be made conscious that there are other customs, from the point of view of the multis, superior customs, then uh, maybe those monos will adapt them. Yeah, adopt them into their, their lifestyle and become more 
multi and as, as those monos get richer and travel more uh, that process will be aided. Uh, well I think I think that's more or less it. I hope you have enjoyed this introduction and I will uh, from now on start uh, lecturing at a hefty rate. I'll have to churn them out. We're, we're you know, churn, churning them out. Right? If I'm to get through uh, so many um, uh, I don't know how realistic it is, hoping over the next decade or two to get through 600 courses, but we'll see. Uh, I, I am expecting to churn them out, and I'll start with the, uh, the undergrad courses and then M1, first year masters, M2, PhD1, and PhD2, and reach uh, high levels in pure mathematics and math physics, and I hope you find them useful and enjoyable.